Christina Klom right in the middle of things. Always so energetic. Here's the first turnover. Chip diving play. Schneider right on top of it with Esty bearing in. Here's a build from the opposite side. Esty has some space in the middle. Knocks it free. Pellegrini bearing down, but that one, Pellegrini takes away her line, so she sends it right side, and it's handled there. Way too far over everybody. Just Steves will knock it to the opposite side for Madison Darty. Darty with the left foot, middle of the field. Chip pass made there. Durkee surveys the pitch, throws long to Esty, knocked back into the corner by Rogers. Durkee's on the chase. A lot of contact, both players spilled. And she'll right foot it for Grofey. Handles that, turns with speed, chips it ahead for Maurier, who's flying. Offense, no doubt about it, as we see her try to send her away a moment ago. Here's McNulty. Tucks back and spins it away. Bombed by O'Connor. She's looking for Esty right side. The header down in! How about that service by Rogers? And the finish by Esty. For the right foot. Plays it back, coming forward. Dusarik, bomb, what a save! He's away. Murphy, service. McConnon, space, hits it, but couldn't get much behind it. Down into the corner. Bombed, service, pitch, head, handled, and bombed away by Morrow. Fighting through traffic. It's McNulty, has some space, left foot, just sends it high. Back to Esty, swims through the first, couldn't get through the second. Now Klom with a shot, and that one just came off awkward. See with this chance, has Pellegrini as well. Chips it through the defense, the speed, the right foot. Oh, beautiful play. And it sets up Gagan. Gagnon plays it back for Rossio. Take it away, Klom. That one's going to bounce in. A chance for Pellegrini, who chips it forward. Spilled inside the box. No whistle, and the Friars' bench is incensed. They reverse, and there seems to be no drop-off to speak of. Steves into the middle. Another one. It's McNulty. I'm putting you into score, freshman. Okay. That one just misses on a long distance bid. Wow, and it looks like Schneider may be hurt. McNulty, a little hesitation move again. She chips it, and again, it's a diving effort by Schneider. That one comes down. Couldn't handle it cleanly, Rogers. This one's bombed in. Pellegrini makes a run, but she does, and we're under 20 seconds left to play. Last ditch bid by Lowell, showing no give up. And that one's out of play. And I'll tell you what, Hogan can just walk this off for the final 10 seconds. And the Friars are going to emerge victorious. A fourth consecutive victory for the Providence College Friars women's soccer team. They have now won five of their last six overall. They move above 500 for the first time all season long, now at five and four. Meanwhile, for UMass Lowell, they suffer their second defeat on the road in four tries. Still winless away from Lowell. They move to three, two, and three. Providence earns their fourth win in a row, taking down the UMass Lowell River Hawks. The first time in program history, 4-2, pardon me, 2-0, the final score. KJ Hammond here joined alongside head coach Sam Lopes. Sam, you dominated the game from start to finish. Were you satisfied with the offensive pace overall? Yeah, um, I just think when... Uh, you're playing against a team that's getting a lot of numbers behind the ball. Um, as the first half went on, and then specifically in the second half, I thought we had really good patience with our our buildups, um, and uh, at the same time trying to break them down and move the ball around. So um, I thought the I thought the ladies executed uh, the game plan um, really well tonight. 
Shelby Hogan gets her second shutout in as many games. What do you think of the young goalie's development so far? Well, Shelby's really talented, but I think uh, when you really look into the performance of both matches, meaning the St. Joe's game and then certainly tonight against Lowell, she only had to make three saves. So I think Shelby has done a really good job organizing the group, but I think uh, the 10 players in front of her deserve a lot of credit for that as well because they're really limiting chances. Um, St. Joe's had come in scoring a lot of goals. Um, so, you know, between St. Joe's and tonight, uh, to only have to make three saves, uh, limit the opponents to very few shots, I think speaks volumes about the team overall defending. All right, Coach, like I said, you win four games in a row. You're rolling right now, but you got a tough matchup with Villanova coming up on Saturday. What adjustments need to be made to make sure you keep grooving in Big East play? Uh, I don't know if it's adjustments. I just think we're still learning about each other. Um, so we've got to take 24 hours and digest this, uh, just learn from it, what are some solutions we can have. And then we've got to put a good week of preparation for Big East play. Uh, the reality is every game in the Big East is going to be super challenging. Mm -hmm. Um, so we know that uh, in order for us to be in a position come Saturday to make more plays in Villanova, uh, it starts with how we prepare. Um, so uh, we'll certainly take a, a day or two to recover and, and digest this game and then put a game plan together and, and hopefully prepare uh, really well this week for, for that opener on Saturday. Coach, thank you very much. Good luck. Once again, the Friars win 2-0 the final score. They'll be back in action right here against Villanova Saturday. Reporting from Choppy Field, I'm KJ Hammond, Friars.com.